Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling at Zimbro. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to continue to take a look at what's new in Zim015. So let's go to the site now, zimjazz.com. And if you see a big banner for the Texture Actives, that's where we're going. We've already done a bubbling on Texture Actives, but this is a second, and we plan on doing a third, possibly a fourth. So uh, you can press on that banner if you want, but if if that banner is not there because it rotates, then another way is you can go to the Zim015 here or the What's New, and both those will find a location. Also, a permanent location will be, or is, available on the code section here under Libraries. So if you go under Libraries, these are helper libraries. One of those helper libraries is Zim3. And in Zim 3, we've added texture actives. We've actually, uh, this is so important, we feel, that we've incorporated the texture actives right in inside of Zim. So you don't need the Zim 3 helper module to use them. You can just use 3JS in Zim. But the 3, the three module will help you set up your 3JS, uh, save you lots of, lots of lines of code. So um, that's also there in most of the examples. Uh, as a matter of fact, all of the examples use the 3 module, but we've also provided a couple of the examples for the first one here, and for the last one on the HUD, we've provided raw examples where we're, use, we're doing it only using Zim and 3JS without the 3 module. All right, we took a look at the first three, but I think we can, uh, we can press on any of these here if we want, or press the texture active and kind of come back to where we were looking before. Uh, these are the latest things in Zim 015, and we've already done bubblings on the generals, and we did bubblings on these first three. So let's go now through the last three of our initial texture active examples. We press on this one. Uh, let's see. This will have some sound. I'm not sure if it'll come out for you. Let's... Yeah, I think that's coming out for you. So there's a bit of an organ. And this is Zim. Nice, huh? Oh, as we get closer to, it gets louder. What this does, the live, is it plays the notes as it moves over it. <laughs> nice. Okay, so what do we got here? Uh, this is a Zim... Hmm, let's see, what is this? Selector. This is a Zim selector right here. And we put that Zim selector on each... on the, on the cube or on the, on the box, I guess, on the box there. The back is normally flipped, so we had to do a little bit of magic to make it match. But the top, see how it's on the top and on the bottom? Uh, that all works out just fine. But the backing, if we didn't do a little bit of magic, and we've abstracted that magic to make it easier for everybody, but if we didn't do a bit of magic flipping that material and flipping the ray cast on it, then as, as we move the back to here, the front would move to the other side. <laughs> it was like kind of annoying. So we first, first of all, we just took the, the texture off of that material at the back, and that was our solution. But then we bit the bullet and figured out how we can, how we can solve that. What's, what's this doing? Let's see. Ooh, okay, this is um, adjusting the smoothness of it. So do you see how now it's uh, quite smooth? Whereas here, it's quite bumpy. So we're, we're going through what's called a noise equation. We're using the Zim noise equation. And now it's very noisy. <laughs> not not sound-wise, but visually-wise or data-wise. It's all over the place. Whereas now it is smoother. And then this one is doing the speed. This is actually kind of fun to do when the sound is going. Right, so there's slow right to a stop. So this is Zim as a HUD. And we can turn off the HUD and on the HUD. It's still in 3JS. It needs to be in 3JS because um, once we are using Texture Active, we are 
we're receiving a ray casting from 3JS and passing that right into CreateJS, which is what Zim's built on. And that flows up through to Zim. But if we're passing it right into CreateJS, we have we can either use it or we can't. So that's taken over the mouse, uh, the mouse and the, the pointers, and been replaced with um, the ray casting coming from 3JS. So we can't just overlay Zim and working like normal with mouse pointers and then have 3JS working underneath it. First of all, the canvases conflict. Second of all, the, um, the data that we're using for where our X and Y is also would conflict. But that's fine. It all worked out just well here. We've got an ortho camera that the HUD is on and then that has a scene as well. And then we've got a normal 3JS scene and normal uh, camera, perspective camera in the back here. Isn't that amazing? Up here is a selector, so let's hear the sounds of this. Uh, by the way, the selector doesn't drag, so that's not, the selector is supposed to select. We could make it so that we could drag along this, but uh, the selector is specifically sort of like one of those television components where you, you pick a letter and it moves to there. The selector can also move in a grid. Right now it's just moving in a straight line, but that could also work in a grid. Oh my goodness, what are these sounds? Let's get out of Cosmic. <laughs> There's Buzzy. You like or do you not like? <laughs> okay. Alrighty, so that's Buzzy, Cosmic, and Oregon. That's called a Zim Stepper up here. So if you're coming in from 3JS and seeing this, you may not be familiar with the, the over 40 components that Zim has. And they're all quite beautiful, uh, very customizable, and well beyond. Uh, Dat GUI or something. I mean, Dat GUI has its place if you want to concentrate on the art that's being made solely. But with Zim, interface is an art. It makes a, a complete app, and we're we're treating at the interface as part of the app and the system. And I think you will love the Zim, the Zim components. Again, you can see those if we press on here or hit the T key. Here are those components in Zim live. So that was left on Oregon. If I click it to Cosmic and come back, it's Cosmic. So what we're doing is we are mapping the canvas of, of Zim, of those Zim parts, the cache canvas actually, we're mapping those onto uh, the texture. Um, that's a, a 3JS canvas texture. Then we're using ray casting to pass in the X and Y data so that we can be uh, interactive on these things. So is that cool? And here we go. We can slide through the very those. These are the selectors. The two. One, that's the one there. And here's another right here. And we're going to take a look at the code um, in a future one. Uh, note this is piano keys, by the way. That's why the colors are like that. Those are the black keys. And we'll show you how we built those selectors. And then here's the couple toggles. So I can hear the sound right now because we just toggled it on. So in other words, we could play that there as well. And then this is the slider and the dial. Aren't those beautiful? Uh, these are cached as well. Um, normally they're even more beautiful, <laughs> uh, even, even crisper, but that's still fairly crisp right there, crisp enough. Uh, but we do have retina uh, crispness on the canvas when we don't have to cache it to go to the GPU. Um, but that's fine. Uh, it's still crisp enough. Um, so there you go. Neat, huh? And close that and come on back. So that's the first one we want to take a look at in this bubbling. The second one here is on a model. Well, it's not quite on a model, actually. What we did is we put a plane on top of the model right there. But there's a model. As you can see, we could have probably put the texture on one of those things in the model if we uh, dug in and sort of found the material or replaced the material, etc. But we've just put a plane in the same place, uh, kind of anchored there. And you ready? Press for a puzzle. OK. 
Okay, check this out. You ready? Whoa. Isn't that beautiful? So this is a scrambler. It's kind of like two lines of code in Zim. And let's solve it. It's a Dr. Ab AI version of Dr. Abstract. <laughs> Woo! Isn't that incredible? There's a scramble. So we try and solve it one more time. But I mean, look at that. Isn't it just so beautiful? I absolutely love this, and I can't wait to try it in VR. I've been wanting to do this in VR for so long because I, we, we put pictures of this in VR in our worlds in Altspace. We put them on the walls all over the place of amazing art, artwork, uh, interactive NFTs and stuff, and I so badly wanted those walls to be interactive, and they weren't. And so we had planned on doing it with the MREs to get the data in and to make it multi-user and all this kind of stuff. And it was just, and then Altspace closed. So we never got to it. Now we have this opportunity um, for any VR worlds made with A-Frame and so forth, like Banter, etc. Banter is side quest folks. And, oh, we can't wait to talk to them and see if we can get Zim in for their menus or, you know, into the worlds as interactive walls and surfaces. Ah, if you think about it, the 3D world is filled with flat screens where we most often work. Those are our mobile devices, our, our monitors, etc. And so why would the 3D world be all that much different? I mean, there's opportunities to make beautiful 3D interfaces, <laughs> like doorknobs and stuff, you know, stuff. We've had those types of interfaces before. But we've gone so much into screens that it kind of makes sense to, to bring the interactions onto those screens. And I hope you're really liking the looks of Zoom because we really like it. <laughs> so uh, let's um, carry on and take a look at the next one then. Uh, this is the HUD example. Uh, the last HUD example with the, with the, the organ is a little complicated. We were scrubbing through noise and so forth. It's not too bad. Zim certainly makes it simple. But we wanted a nice, simple, straightforward HUD example with just the interfaces without too much fuss. So here's what we've got. We can now increase the speed of that model. We can change the color as well. It's not a model of the mesh right there. Um, and so that's a, a 3JS mesh, a pretty impressive looking one, I must say. And there's the changing of the colors. And then up here, we're kind of whoosh using Animate in Zim. So Zim's got animation that rivals Greensock or GSAP. Uh, we have as much as they have, if not more. We can animate along paths and do all sorts of uh, drag along paths through our animations. So there's all sorts of things. And I think you'll find it simple, uh, very simple to use, Zim Animate. So there we are animating to our different places. We're also animating the speed and changing the rate uh, based on that as well with a slider. And once again, we are hiding the HUD. If we press on this, we see the HUD elements. There's the slider right there. These have been quite customized. Although the picker is right out of the box. The, this is tabs, it's right out of the box. We've added some corners on those tabs. This is a slider right here out of the box, although we can make our sliders look a lot different here. And we added a kind of in, um, a backing of that to say, warning, 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 you're going too fast. Uh, okay, isn't that cool? So back again to here. And once again, if we chose the orange and come back in and scroll on over here, the orange is picked. If I pick the pink and hit the T key or come on back, then it's pink. So that's a live mapping. You don't have to show the end user that. The idea is that would help you as you're creating. And we're going to show you some code about how all this stuff was created in an upcoming bubbling. Often though, if we're going through a lot of code, then we'll do Zim Explorers. And Zim Explorers are hour long videos that really get, gets into the code. So in our bubbling, we'll probably take you through maybe one of the examples and then the rest will be in Explorers. It'll probably be enough of a bubbling to just show you say that first one. All right, so if you're excited by all this, like we are, then please come and visit us at zimjs.com slash discord and zimjs.com slash slack. We'd love to hear from you there and 
be more than happy to give you help on getting these texture actives into your 3JS. And welcome to the Zim world. Cheers. I'm Dr. Abstract. Have a great day or night.